All right, hey guys, happy new year. I am doing a 2019 updated version of how to use GitHub because to be quite honest, uh, it's been changing every year and Microsoft actually bought GitHub. So that kind of puts the onus on them to have uh, more sophisticated and actually working and supported integration with GitHub. So, um, and also as a side note, m a lot of my students have more trouble using GitHub than actually programming. So what I really want to do in this video is just show you quickly how to use GitHub. It's actually really easy as long as you follow the instructions that I'm about to give. Requirements, you need a Microsoft account. So if you're using a Mac, you know, um, if you're using you know, Windows 10 or whatever, then you have a Microsoft account already. That's what you use to log in to your operating system. If you have a Mac, um, you know, you're on your own, figure out, figure out how to, <laughs> maybe you want to create a Microsoft account anyway. Um, but Visual Studio's integration requires that you sign into your Microsoft account. So I'm going to assume that I'm talking to somebody on a Windows machine who is using Visual Studio, um, probably uh, 2017 Community Edition, which is what I have here. So I'm using Visual Studio uh, Community 2017 and the .NET stuff is the important part. All right, so here we go. You have your Microsoft account. Obviously, you have an email address. You need that. Uh, you, prob you probably want to use the same email address that you have registered for your Microsoft account. And you also want to use the same email address to create your GitHub account. Um, to create your GitHub account, obviously, go to github.com and sign up. So. If you actually go to your uh, GitHub page, your personal page, which is just github.com slash your username, and you're not signed in, it'll look like this. It'll think you're just somebody out there who's viewing uh, the page. So in order to, for it to know that you're actually the administrator, you have to sign in. Uh, so after you create your account, you'll have to remember your username, your username and password, obviously. Uh, letting the browser remember it in its cache is really not good enough because, trust me, you're going to be somewhere someday um, on another computer in a strange land <laughs> where you're going to need to log in and, and it's not going to have it cached. So please uh, remember your, your username and password for GitHub. All right, so once you're in, you'll know that you're signed in because over here on the little drop-down menu, it says signed in as Donnie Santos or whoever you are. And all of these things that you see here uh, probably won't be there the first time <laughs> that you create your account because these are repositories. So that's the, basically the, the idea of this video is to explain what is a repository and how do I use it with Visual Studio to get my code and to push code. <laughs> so or what a repository actually is is quite complicated because it uses the Git technology that Linus Torvalds uh, created to um, allow sharing and collaboration between a, a, a you know one actual uh, base of code to allow branching, to allow diffs, to allow modification, and all kinds of things like that. So instead of going into the gory details of that, I'm simply going to give you a working knowledge of how to uh, treat a repository like a simple remote folder. So think of it that way. A repository is basically a folder in the cloud that you can store your code in. And it's uh, it's more than that. Obviously, you can perform uh, complicated operations on it that you can't do in Dropbox. Uh, you can't apply uh, you know, a, a merge to a set of code in Dropbox, but you can in GitHub. So um, I'm going to pretend like there's no repositories here. So this under your new account, it'll say repository zero. So when you click on repositories, it'll be nothing here. Either way, uh, you're going to want to say new repository, and you only want one for each thing that you're doing. Like so, for for my class, for example, you're just going to want an IT 1050 uh, repository. But I'm going to name it something else because I already have an IT 1050 repository. So I'm just going to call this um, test repo. All you have to do here when you say new repo is type in the name and say create. And boom, you're done. So this is where it gets confusing to people. They understand that they're signed in 
Um, they understand that they have repositories, right? And they can see the repository they just created. Here's the one that I just created, and I can click on it. But from here, people start to have trouble, and this is where I'm going to explain exactly what to do. So first thing is to note that the URL up at the top is actually the physical address of the repository. Okay, very important. Because when we start, um, look at my desktop, it's totally empty. There's no, nothing on my desktop. So when I go to um, Visual Studio, you want to go to the Team Explorer. Now the Solution Explorer will show you what solution you currently have open, but the Team Explorer will help you interface with GitHub. So the Team Explorer. Now there's all these little buttons up here. Um, so if you click Start at the Home button and then go to Settings and the Global Settings, you might want to just t uh, look this over, make sure it has your name, email address correct, uh, where you want to put your local repository. So you know the the repository on GitHub is remote; it's on their servers. But when you have the local version, it's going to be a mirror image of it on your computer. And this is specifying where you want that to be. I put it on the desktop, so it'll be super easy to find. <laughs> All right. So most of the stuff doesn't matter, but you know you want, might want to just check out at least that your, and your email address and your name. So once that's done, uh, basically you want to go to the little plug. So that's where you want to connect. So, so this, is, this is where the magic starts. So remember, oops, I can close this now. So this URL is the location of your repository. So I'm going to copy that with Control C. And the first time, if you're at a computer that doesn't have anything to do with your um, GitHub account, you want to do clone. And then you just want to see how it says enter the URL of a git repo to clone. You simply paste in that URL that I just had in my browser, that guy right there. You just paste it right in. And notice it's going to put um, a copy of it on my desktop. So I'm going to say clone. Cloning, cloning, cloning. And it's done and it opened the solution explorer, which I'm going to promptly close. I'm going to close anything that looks annoying. And now it says something that I'm going to ignore for a second. I'm just going to minimize Visual Studio and minimize my browser and show you that there is now a folder on my computer called test repo. So this is the local mirror image of my repository here. So this is test repo um, on GitHub on the server. This is test repo on my computer. The important thing to understand is once these connections are set up, see how it says connect test repo? If it says connect disconnected, that's no good. That means you did something wrong. That means there's something wrong in your settings, you didn't log into GitHub correctly, you have your password wrong, you have your email address wrong, something like that. But once you get it right, it'll say connect and your repository. That means that the online folder and the local folder are connected. And to prove it, um, you can just create, you know, uh, something, anything, test, hello world. <clears throat> so if I drag and drop this into test repo, right? So in test repo, there's, you know, some stuff, this, just ignore the GitHub stuff, don't touch that. But I added that file. And over here, if I go back to home and I go to changes, so this is test repo changes. Notice that it was like, it is now aware that there's a difference, right? That's what, that's what um, basically GitHub is all about, is um, taking a, a copy of the repository, working with it, and then when you're done working, you either throw away your changes or you do nothing, or you apply your changes to the remote. And once you apply them to the remote, they're permanent and, and anybody can um, see them and pull and pull that code down and look at the things that you added. That's how you're going to be turning in your homeworks to me. You're going to be um, doing it locally and then pushing up to the server. So there's a couple of steps here required once you've actually made changes. I mean, the first step obviously is to verify that you have changes. So if you didn't do anything over here, it'll it'll say and you'll see this in a second. It'll be like no changes have been made. But if you click on the home button and changes, it says for the test repo repository, these are the changes. And the main one is that I added this file. So you're allowed to add a, 
actually you have to add some type of message, but you don't. It doesn't have to be meaningful. But I'm going to write added test.txt. So now there's a three-step process here. You have to commit, you have to sync, and then you have to push. Commit, sync, push. Commit all. Um, sync. See this little sync button here. Sync. And then there's a little blue button there. Push. 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 It's pushing, it's pushing, it's pushing, and it says it's done, successfully pushed. I'm going to close that little message. Um, let's see here. Let's just close that and close that. So I'm going to go back to my uh, online repository and just click refresh in the browser. And whoop, look at that. So now it has test.txt, which is which has the text hello world. So I can view this code on, the, on my browser. I don't have to be logged in to view it. I only have to be logged in to get to my GitHub web page to make changes like add a repository, delete a repository, or things like that. But anybody can come here in the world and type in github.com slash Santos slash test repo and look at my code. Or anybody's code on GitHub as long as it's a public account. So that's there, right? And like I said, um, now the two folders, the remote folder and my local folder, are perfectly synchronized. There's no difference between them. They're still connected, but there's no difference. So when I click home and changes, it says there are no unstaged changes in the working directory because I didn't change anything. So now if I add files, if I remove files, if I change the content of files from this point on, I don't have to clone anymore. I only, you only want to clone if you need to set up a local folder that is linked to the remote. And you can do that as many times as you want. You could go to everybody's house on your street and go to, onto their computer and clone a local repository. And they, you know, there could be, um, if you tell everybody about it, or for example, if everybody in my class cloned my repository, then you know there'd be as many repository, or sorry, as many local clones out there as there are students. So there's one remote repository, but you can clone it locally on other computers as many times as you want. And that's how you work as a team. So like the team has one uh, centralized repository that they're all cloning and then changing and then committing and then syncing and then pushing. That's how it basically works. So um, if I deleted this folder, I would have to reclone it. But if I never delete it, if I just leave it there and you know spend the rest of the semester just ch making changes, I never have to do anything complicated ever again. All I have to do is come in here. Maybe I change my code a little bit and say like, just add exclamation mark, something just as small as that. When I come back here, look at the changes. It noticed, right? Added, bang. Commit all, sync push. Wait. Wait patiently. Go back to the website. Refresh. Notice it says the last thing that I did was add the bang. And there's my test.txt with an exclamation mark. I can look at the history even if I want. I could say uh, it says three minutes ago I added the test.txt and 23 seconds ago I added the bang. If you click on add the bang it'll show you a diff that this is what you had and this is what you have. So it'll show you a complete history of everything that changed, when it changed, and who changed it. That is why it's different than Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, so on and so forth. That is it. That's really all you have to do. So I will show you though what happened, you know, like what if you want to delete it and reclone it. So let's say I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done here. I'm done at school. I'm going home. And now I'm at home. And I'm on a completely different computer now, and I'm like, well, I, I want to work on my homework. So what do I do? I open up Visual Studio, and I go to the Team Explorer again. See, it says it's offline. Um, see, there's nothing here. It doesn't know I'm on a different computer. There's no uh, connection to the GitHub repository. So which one is it? Repositories, test repo. So here's the URL. Go back in Visual Studio. Now I'm going to clone it on my desktop. 
can call any, you can call the local anything you want. It doesn't have to be the same name. DSDF. It's cloning it, cloning it, cloning it. And it's adding that. And now you can see that I have, again, successfully cloned the directory. And this time, when I change something in it, see, notice I got the hello world with the exclamation mark. Because when I was at school, I pushed it up to the server. And now that I'm at home, I pulled it down with the changes that I pushed up to the server. So this is kind of the beauty of it. You can access it anywhere. You can, you know, you don't have to put your code on a flash drive or anything like that. So I'm gonna do one more thing. I'll say like, that's all. Change that, maybe add another file. Um, actually, yeah, we'll do that. New text document. That's fine. Go back here, go home, changes. You can see that um, I added a new file, but I modified test.txt. If I double click on that, it'll show me the changes. See that, how beautiful it is? It says, you removed hello world and you replaced it with that's all. So once again, I can type in the commit message. I changed some stuff commit, sync, push. Wait patiently. Now it's done. Go back to my GitHub account, refresh it. There's two files there now. Change some stuff. That's all. Um, I think I wanted to do one more thing. What was it? Oh yeah, I just wanted to show you that there is also some cool shortcuts. Um, I'm going to do this uh, a little, I'm just going to do this really easy. So I'm going to go to, oh, before I do really quick, if you want to delete your repository, go to the repository and go to the settings. See this right here, test repo settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom to the danger zone. First, let me close visual studio <laughs> and delete that all the way down to the bottom of the danger zone and say, delete this repository. And then you have to type in the name test repo. I understand delete this repository. And now it's gone. So now when I go back to my repositories, it just has my normal ones that were already there. Now I'm going to show you, um, and you'll notice this if you have already, if you already have a clone of my IT 1050 folder, or if you are going to do it now, you'll see this when you get it, because I'm actually going to push a real change. Um, so I'm going to take that URL, and I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. So I'm going to clone that repo. So this is my actual IT1050 um, repository that has all of the section 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 code for our class. Okay. So it actually has the solution open. I can um, run any of these basically. So I'm going to close down all this. I'm going to close down the Team Explorer. So the cool little shortcut that I was going to tell you is that you can actually make changes and check them in without opening the Team Explorer. You can do it through the Solution Explorer, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to first, I'm going to open a solution. You know, I'll just do it the, the way you, pro you guys probably do it. Here's IT1050 folder that's now cloned and linked to, um, symbolically linked to GitHub. I'll just open section one. I'll open the solution. So the way that you know you'll use you'll usually do it once you start uh, having more faith in yourself and understanding GitHub is when you you won't even really use the Team Explorer much. You'll have your solution open, you'll have your code open, and maybe you'll you'll want to make a change to uh, one of your code files. So I'll just open this. So first of all, notice that there's nothing red over here. That'll make sense in a second. Uh, I'm just going to make some kind of superficial change to this, like move this down a line. A double slash creates a comment. Comments are okay. That's fine. So I've made a change in this file, and notice all of a sudden there's a red check mark over here. All right, I'm going to close that. So the cool thing is, is that um, you can actually commit that right here without opening up the Team Explorer and going through any of the more um, the Team Explorer is 
is uh, you know optimized for trying to make changes to, uh, through GitHub or through your whatever repository you're connected to. But at the same time, they realized that some things should be easy, like just checking in some files. So you can actually right click this. Uh, the red check mark means there's a pending edit. So you can actually right click that and say commit. And you should be able to say something like I changed program.cs or uh, whatever, made some changes. And then commit all sync push and that's it so instead of having to go into the um, team explorer uh, you can just look at the solution explorer of what you have open and anything that has pending changes will have a red check mark on it and you can just right click and say commit that's the easy way to do it and then once again um, even if you delete your folder and start over and go to a friend's house and go to hey stop that go to github.com and your username and you go to see you already you already saw it it said the last update was 44 seconds ago I made some changes you go to section one you go to example one you go to program.cs and there's my change I can look at the history and one minute ago made some changes and they're there cool that's it that's how to use github uh, it's really not that hard once you understand how to clone a repository um, the hardest part is just making sure that you have your visual studio configured correctly so uh, if we have any problems like that uh, post on blackboard screenshots um, ask questions in class uh, and we'll help you out with it so that should be all and I am out of here